Hello, everybody. Happy New Year, 2022. We have Rainbow the Budgie here. Hope everyone had a peaceful holiday. And we're going to start our new year with a new gold. Lots of people want to have a bird and need to be informed about how these birds think, their behaviors, and what to expect. Birds are not easy to take care of. People think all these little kind of animals should be easy, but it's not. You have to do your research. And today, I'm going to start a series about birds. If you're thinking about birds, especially for the first time, you would need to know a lot of information about these guys and see if it's right for you. Hi, Rainbow. What you doing? For those of you who have interest in owning a bird, but not really any experience, this is what I need to tell you. Birds are a handful. Yes, you are a handful. You see, he has lots of toys to keep him stimulated. Oh, there he goes. He's not confined to his cage. He's in his cage to eat, to sleep, to drink, and to rest. Most of the time, he's outdoors, meaning outside his cage. So he has room to fly, room to stretch, and that is part of being a healthy bird. It's not only physical, it's mental too. So lots of things to consider. Birds could be lots of fun. But I get a lot of people asking me, how do you train the bird? Well, first you have to understand how bird thinks and each species are slightly different in their potentials too. Hey Rainbow, what is he doing now? He's preening himself, meaning he's like taking a dry bath, you can say. He's taking his feathers and each one of them he's going through like a comb. Because the bird clean himself with the beak. And this is how he is doing that. So a healthy bird would preen many times a day. Look at those healthy, pretty, vibrant feathers. Okay, so are you thinking of getting a bird? If so, this video and the videos coming up are going to be very informative. Number one, we have to know that birds spook very easily. Why is that? Well, birds in nature are outside, right? They're not domesticated. Even though these type of birds are domesticated, they spook easily, just like what I just did. I did something fast and spooked him. Sorry about that. Okay, you don't have to yell at mommy. But anyway, these birds spook easily. Why? Because of nature? You're always being preyed upon. So you're always on the lookout. You're very quick in flight, you can see. By the time I walk over to the other cage, he's already flown off. He's very quick. He, these type of birds, especially the budgies, they outfly the falcon in nature. Yes. Okay, Rainbow. Understanding a bird prevents frustration. So I know he's hungry. It's early in the morning. Come on, mommy got some food here. We go back to your big cage. See, they're very smart. They know what we're talking about. But that comes with time and training. See, he goes into the cage. I know what he wants because I know his body language. I know his vocals. I know the time of day, his schedule. So that's an understanding between owner and bird. That comes in time and experience. And we have to know that birds are forever toddlers. Why is that? Because they have a limitation. And some people say, oh, because birds live such a short life. That's not true. 
These birds here, the smaller the bird, the shorter the life. The larger the bird, the longer the lifespan. So the bigger birds can outlive humans very easily too. So that's why it's not because of their lifespan that they are forever toddlers. It's just how it is. It's a limitation to their, I guess, brain power. So what does that mean, forever toddlers, for those of you who are not parents yet? Toddlers throw tantrums. Toddlers need their parents for guidance. They need help. They don't know what's best for them. They are dependent on you 100% of the time. That's why I say birds are forever toddlers. Okay, so we humans are the bird owners. We are responsible in every way for our birds because they depend heavily on us for their food, for their water, for their warmth, for their shelter, for their health, for how much exercise they get. They depend everything on us because they're domesticating, meaning they are in under our roof and we are responsible for them. Some species are more um, prone to different diseases than others and some birds are more cuddly. Some birds could talk easier than other species. So depending on your needs, you need to do your research. You live in an apartment or you live in a house and um, what your living arrangement is now and what your living arrangement will be future because these birds live quite a few years. I had a viewer who is a trucker and he just loves birds. So he loves watching YouTube videos and he told me that one day he might get a bird because he's always wanted one but he's out on the road. He's a trucker. He drives a truck and they have long hours. They are away from their own home for days at a time. So he knows that he just will not make a good bird owner. So he's not getting a bird yet, but he might in the, in the future when his job changes. So that's very prudent of him to consider way out in the future, what you can provide for your future pet. If you're a preteen or a teenager, you're going off to college, Colleges do not allow birds. They don't allow any pets. After the first year, most colleges will let you live somewhere else. And again, it depends on which place you live. If you live in an apartment, there are restrictions. A lot of times, birds are not allowed. So do your research and plan ahead. For those of you who have been following my channel, I had one bird for about a year and a half before I introduced its second bird. And then maybe a few years later, I introduced a third bird. And at one time I had three birds. And now I have one bird. Seeing the different number of birds in my environment, and I've kept it pretty much the same, how I treat them, how, how um, they behave is very different. So if you have one bird, Plan on spending a lot of time with your bird. Otherwise, your bird will be lonely because these birds are social beings. They like to be either in the flock or be entertained. They don't like to be alone. So I provide a lot of toys, as you can see, for enrichment and simulation for my bird. And if you have more than one bird, then they'll have company. The drawback is, given a choice, human companionship is not in their plan. So a lot of people, but more than one bird at a time, have asked me how to tame and train the birds because they're just not listening. So I was able to be successful in that area where I bought one bird first for about a year and a half train the bird thoroughly to my desire and to my satisfaction and then bring in a second bird. That is the 
reason why I was able to have both birds so tamed. The, bringing the second bird, the first bird would be the mentor for the second bird too. And then for the third bird, it was automatic. The first two birds were his mentor and he knew exactly what his uh, boundaries were. But being a little sneaky like this guy is, he does break the rules. Right, Rainbow? And now you have your own laptop. Rainbow got this laptop for Christmas and he uh, got used to it really quick. It's very cute. He's got his own MacBook Air. Yeah, we gotta watch out for this one. This guy is so smart. Gotta make sure he's not uh, using the password and getting into the ordering thing. You know, like the buying frenzy to be a shopaholic. You're not gonna be a shopaholic, right? Good boy. You gonna push your ball? Hmm? You gonna want to play? Does Rainbow want to play? Want to push this ball down? No? Okay, you make your own decisions. Another thing is, when they're a lone bird, like this one, he makes his own decision. He used to be a follower. He would follow whatever the other birds do, because that's the behavior of a flock. He does what the other does, right? That means you're not making your own decision. But you are now. I noticed that the most challenging thing for a new bird owner is to tame the bird. So at least have your bird finger tamed. This way, you have some kind of control over your bird. And once your bird is finger tamed and trusts your hand and bonded with you um, some, you can let the bird out without training the basics and letting your bird out will be a disaster. Because how are you going to get your bird back into the cage without traumatizing the bird, right? Traumatizing means you're grabbing the bird, you're trying to shoot the bird back into the cage, that's not good because you're going to undo all his trust in you. Okay? So remember, these birds spook easily. You don't want to give them a bad impression. To undo bad behaviors, undesired behaviors, is very difficult. So you train them and do it right the first time and then your rewards will be so big. Do your research extensively. Determine your physical space your living arrangement, even your family needs, unless you're living alone. In the coming weeks, I'm going to give you little tips on how I train my birds, and you can be successful too, but training birds takes a lot of patience, and it takes time. Thanks for watching. Bye.